Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm coming to you live, well not live, I'm coming to you from my mom's house which uh, is the reason why the audio might sound like trash. I know people don't care about this, you just want to talk about procedurally modeling a waffle, but disclaimer, audio's trash from my mom's house. Maybe it isn't even too bad, I'm just using a new microphone. Either way, um, yeah, today we're going to be talking about procedural modeling using geometry nodes making uh, waffles like these, which look lumpy and all this, but that's because that's what a waffle looks like. So we're going to be talking about volumetric modeling, we're going to talk about point distribution, we're going to talk about extrusion, a bunch of new topics that you might not be familiar with. And again, all of this is a modifier, so if I disable it, you can see it's just a cube, and the rest of this is geo nodes. Let's get into it, okay? Uh, really, I do think the waffle is the perfect project because it's kind of a complicated shape. It's a circle, but it's also a grid. It's raised and it's very kind of geometric, but it's also lumpy. Uh, so there, there's a lot of things to go through here. Either way, uh, geometry nodes, get rid of the cube, add a cube. We don't want the default cube and create a geo nodes group. Uh, the name of the game is making a grid because the waffle has a grid like structure. It's making a grid, constraining it to a circle, and then somehow making it into a lumpy thing. So let's do that. First order of business is we need to add in a grid. So I'm adding in a grid, going to wireframe so I can see the density of it, and I'm gonna bring it up. And the way I want you to think about this is these uh, squares are gonna be the kind of maple syrup reservoirs of our uh, waffle. So the density of this actually matters. If we wanna constrain this to a circle, you might think that's kind of complicated, but no, we can just use a mesh boolean. So if I just take a cylinder, right? So we take a cylinder and we're going to intersect it with this. That's going to constrain it into a circle. So I'm going to take our cylinder, make it higher resolution, and it's also going to have to be a smaller radius, but we'll get to that. And we want to intersect these. So anytime you want to have a shape kind of constrained to another, a uh, mesh boolean is the way to do that. So we're going to take a grid. We are going to intersect it, not difference, but we are going to intersect it, which has the uh, same input on this node, um, with a cylinder. But you can see it doesn't do anything because the cylinder is too big. So take the radius, bring it down. And the exact number is 0.5 because um, our grid has a diameter of 1, which means the radius should be half that because radius goes on both sides. Either way. Either way, uh, we have a grid circle that we can control. Um, next order of business is uh, we don't want there to be this grid along the X and the Y axis. What do I mean? Well, if you think about a waffle, at least the one I'm thinking about, it kind of has four quadrants, and we want to eliminate this section and this section so we see a bit of separation. Again, if I want to remove something, just in the same way I wanted to intersect something, if I want to remove something, we can do that with the mesh uh, boolean. So we're going to take this, we're going to set it to different. So it's a lot of boolean stuff, then a lot of extrusion stuff, then a lot of volumetric stuff. A lot to go through here. So uh, to get rid of the center sections, think about what shape that is. Well, it's kind of like a plane we're getting rid of, but in uh, three dimensions, we can think about it as a cube. So take the cube. First of all, we want the difference to be this, everything we've done so far, subtract away the cube. Uh, again, everything's going to be invisible in the same way that the cylinder wasn't adjusted. Uh, take the cube, make it thinner. Okay, so what, I'm, what we're looking at here is this kind of rectangular prism that we're making. Or, I guess it is a rectangular prism, it's just kind of a weird thing to call it. Um, we're, we're, we're making a cube, okay? And I'm fitting it to be roughly the right thing. I'm seeing that my density is a bit too high, so I'm going to bring it to 12. And we can always change this later. Uh, but I also want this on the y-axis. So are we going to subtract away a second cube? You bet your bippy. Which is something that my science teacher would always say. And also that science teacher had a messy backpack. I'm still salty about this, Mr. Condell. He uh, took my backpack and flipped it over and had all the stuff fall on the floor in front of the whole class. He's like, pick it up, organize your backpack, put it in put it in neatly this time. Not a fan of that. I think I uh, tried to not cry, and I don't think I did cry. 
Either way, we're going to subtract away another cube. This one we are going to rotate by 90 degrees. Uh, if you want to be fancy, we can use the same cube for this. So we're subtracting away a cube and also a transformed rotated version. So if I was to look at these, we have this cube, this cube, we're subtracting them away. And uh, notice everything so far completely procedural, right? We can change that. We can change our grid resolution, whatever. At this point, we should probably save. I'm going to call it available on Patreon. By the way, I don't think I mentioned this. We're going to turn this into a two-part tutorial series. Part one, uh, the procedural modeling. Part two, the uh, procedural shading. So uh, now that we have this, uh, if we look at solid view, you can see it's just a bunch of it looks like pie slices. All this grid information is kind of hidden in wireframe. What we want to do is we want to extrude this on the z-axis to kind of give this depth. So if we have our uh, reservoirs, I want them to be three-dimensional now. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to take everything we have so far. I'm going to extrude mesh by less. And you can see it's just kind of taking these pie slices. It's not really what we want. I'm going to set this to edges. And this gives us the waffle cone, well not waffle cone, it gives us the waffle kind of look. Uh, because what it's doing is it's taking all the edges from before and extruding them upwards. So it kind of preserves that grid-like uh, structure. Whereas if you added faces, it extrudes the faces. You could also try vertices to make like a hairy waffle, but there we go. So this is the base of our waffle and soon Right now it's looking kind of the correct shape, but it looks super geometric. It doesn't look like this lumpy baked thing. We're going to work on that. Uh, but before that, I just want to add kind of like a circle to this. What do I mean by that? I mean, right now we have four separate sections. There's nothing connecting them. So I'm just going to make a connection plate, uh, if that makes sense. And then we're going to turn it into something that looks good. Uh, so to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a mesh circle. Um, again, this circle is too big, so radius 0.5. Let's also up the resolution. And I want this to be a filled-in circle that I can join with the other thing. So what do I mean? I mean that we're going to have this plate that's connecting them. And if anything, we can make this thing a tiny bit bigger and a tiny bit higher. So I want it to be not exactly on the ground, because I want there to be... It, it, you almost have to think about what the waffle press does. So I'm going to make it a tiny bit higher, maybe by 0.01, and I'm going to make it a tiny bit bigger, so 0.51. So it's just kind of sticking out. Uh, so we have the base of our waffle, and uh, this is kind of the shape it would generate when it's pressed. Okay, okay, next order of business, and I'm going to turn on cavity just so we can see a bit better. Um, and I also don't like, by the way, that you can kind of see the slivers here. So before we continue, you could either bring down the grid resolution or uh, what you can do is change the width of the cube. So something like that. Um, okay, so we've generated the kind of base shape of our waffle, again, entirely procedural. So even a complicated shape, sometimes the best way to do it is with nodes. Uh, we want this to look good. And it's going to be kind of a weird process to do this, so follow along. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this mesh and I'm going to distribute a bunch, a bunch of points everywhere, thousands of points. We're then going to take those points and say generate a mesh based off of those. And because we're putting points on this thing, it's going to look like a lumpy thing inherently. Um, and then once we generate this nice volume, we can turn it back into a mesh and all this. Let me just show you. Um, so again, this uh, mesh is kind of the baseline. It's kind of infinitely thin. It's not what we want. So let's take this and distribute a bunch of points. So you've seen this uh, maybe in how you generate clouds and stuff like this. There's a whole bunch of uses for this. I'm going to take the density and bring it up to a lot, like 4,000. And you can kind of see it's kind of outlining our shape, but now it's composed of these points. That, and here's kind of the tricky, it's not tricky, but here's the trick. Uh, to this, we're going to take points to volume. So we've taken our points and generated a kind of volumetric, and we bring down the radius, and you can start seeing if we make it a tiny bit smaller. You can kind of see the shape of the waffle, a little hard to tell. We're going to turn it into a volume, and then we're going to take our volume and turn it back into points, so volume to mesh. So again, points to volume, volume to mesh. And you can see it's kind of looking trippy right now, but if we take this thing, you can see it's kind of turned it into a more organic thing. Uh, let's make it look better. 
Uh, main thing is the radius is something we want to change. Basically, each one of these points has a sphere around it, a volumetric sphere, and we want to say, make that radius tinier, so it's kind of like higher resolution in some sense, so it's not as bulbous. So I take it divided by two, you can see the waffle shape is starting to come out, and it's all connected and organic. Take the voxel amount, make it bigger too. And by the way, if you see any gaps in your mesh, uh, which might be good, maybe that's what makes it look organic, um, it's because we don't have enough points distributed. So you can see, here's a thousand points on our waffle, two thousand, four thousand, etc. Um, so you can think of this as kind of like the lumpiness value or resolution. Um, so you can see this base connection plate's pretty important. So you can see, I know I, know I keep saying so you can see, I'm going to try to kick that habit. You see, uh, we've turned this into a singular mesh that again, everything kind of relies on these previous nodes. So we can go back, change the resolution of this. It's kind of cool actually. I don't need to convince you. If you think it's cool, it's cool. If it's not, it's not. I don't need to be over here being like, watch my tutorial, it's great. You're learning stuff. Um, why am I taking forever to get to the point? Uh, we have this volumetric, but it's kind of looking a bit too lumpy. Uh, so let's do two things to this. First of all, I'm gonna set shade smooth, and this is kind of a huge part of making it look better. Another thing we can do is to kind of smooth it out, we can add a subdivision surface. Um, this would work better if we add less resolution. So here's before and after, just kind of smooths it out. And I'm just gonna bring up the voxel amount until I get my desired amount of detail. Again, too much detail makes it look a little too lumpy, not enough makes it look too smooth. Uh, so something like this. And uh, at this point, you can kind of pick the shape of your waffle, how tall do you want it to be? And this is going to be useful because we're actually going to add in maple syrup. Um, so yes, we're not skipping over that part. Uh, we can also bring down the radius even more, although at some point the mesh starts breaking. There we go, that looks pretty good. Um, we can pick the shape of this, and we can also pick the seed, and this will give us slightly different variations. Uh, but I think I'm happy with our standard waffle. Uh, let's add a bit more detail. So right now, uh, we've taken this geometric thing, this one, this geometric thing, turned it into kind of a cohesive mesh, which looks a lot better, uh, but it still kind of looks too deterministic. I want to add a bit of noise. Um, remember, everything we did to generate the mesh is dependent on these points. So, so if I was to add a, a set position node, uh, right here and alter the points, it's going to alter the mesh. What do I mean? I'm g I mean, uh, we're going to alter the position of the points with some randomness, and I know it's going to look crazy, but just trust me, if I can click, if I can just click this little diamond, it's because I'm using my laptop. There we go, we got it. Um, it's going to look crazy, uh, but we can fix this with a bit of vector math. Again, every time you add a noise, it's adding in a random number between 0 and 1. We want to average it. So subtract by 0.5, that's gonna shift it back to the middle, and then we're gonna scale it. You've seen this trick 100 times. Um, when we set the scale to zero, nothing happens, but we add a tiny bit of scale, and you can see it's breaking up our uh, waffle. I'm gonna bring down the scale of this, so the uh, distortion is kind of applying in a larger sense. You can make that even smaller. So, you know, up to you. I'm just gonna add a bit of distortion to our waffle, and this is making it look a lot more broken up, so before, after. And I'm trying to think. I think I'm pretty happy with this. We could bring down the detail a tiny bit, and I think that's the base of our waffle. Um, next thing, and this is the last thing we're gonna procedurally model before we get to shading, um, I also wanna generate a maple syrup map, and by that I mean I'm gonna make some geometry where our maple syrup's gonna be, and if you think about it, it's going to be like in these reservoirs, um, which we somehow need access to. But if you remember, uh, back here, we have exactly that. We have our uh, maple syrup map. So what I'm going to do, and it's weird talking about geometry as maps, but whatever. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete geometry. So this is going to be kind of a cool thing. I'm going to delete faces randomly using a random uh, probability. And you can think of this as basically saying which... Um, grids, which reservoirs are going to have maple syrup. Uh, let's look at it like this. So that, that that's pretty neat. By the way, you can kind of see these super, super thin lines. 
Again, we can adjust our, there we go. Make it just a tiny bit bigger to not get this. So uh, you can see this kind of uh, handles our maple syrup thing. Uh, what are we gonna do with this? We're gonna join it with the, uh, the waffle map. Although I guess uh, technically we should add the distortion and all this, but I don't think it's gonna be a big deal. Um, so what am I gonna do? I'm gonna join this and we are gonna raise this. And I'll show you how this is gonna be useful. So we take it, we raise it up, and you can kind of see it's filling in our reservoirs. And uh, this is something we can randomly uh, vary. So what we're gonna end up doing, by the way, is we're gonna apply two materials, one here, one here, and we're, this is next tutorial kind of stuff because I think I've already overloaded you with information. I'm gonna have one syrup material and one waffle material. And what's gonna end up happening is this is syrup, this is waffle. Let me just kind of get a basic uh, scene set up here. So I'm just adding in an HDRI environment uh, to our thing. And let's see this in rendered mode. Looks much better with uh, lighting and all this. Uh, what's gonna end up happening is with our syrup material, uh, we are going to, if I can find the nodes, we're gonna make this kind of like a watery kind of reflective material, so low roughness, high transmission, so you can already see it's kind of looking syrupy. We make it kind of a orangey golden color. Uh, we'll work on it, but you can see how this is filling in uh, parts of our waffle and looks a lot better, and we can control how much of this is gonna have syrup, and also a bit of randomization. And it looks like it's kind of, parts of the mesh are kind of poking through. So I want to make this a tiny bit taller. Like that. And uh, that's how we're going to generate our syrup. But that is uh, a topic for another day. But I do want to up the roughness. Uh, either way, I think I'm happy with uh, this so far. We did the procedural modeling. So... Do I have a scene set up for a camera? I don't even have a scene set up for a main camera. I'll just make this bigger. Um, okay, so that is the end of the tutorial. I hope you learned something. And as always, at the end of these, I like to pimp the ever-living ship or chip out of my uh, Patreon. Uh, Patreon, there's a link in the description, is a place where you can join 800 some very generous folks that are funding these tutorials and CG Matter videos, uh, where you can get three things in return. You can get early access to tutorials. So if you wanna see part two and you don't wanna wait for it, Patreon's the place to get it. Uh, in general, early access, sometimes a week early, sometimes a day early. Uh, you get the uh, project files, so you can get the waffle blend, the thing you saw in the beginning, those renders, uh, you can get access to uh, the blend that generated those. Um, and at this point, there are hundreds of blends and project files since I've been at this for a while. Download all of that uh, with a uh, Patreon membership. And thirdly, uh, there's a catalog of exclusive tutorials uh, that you can see that are not available for free on YouTube, but I try to keep everything free. Um, in general, uh, the business model is keep all the information for free. If you want project files, if you want to see the videos early, uh, this is just something you can get access to. But overall, uh, if you want to keep this channel running, uh, Patreon is the best way to do that. So I want to thank all 800 generous patrons and the newest patron, whoever that is. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in part two.